divine intervention. When you get to a point where all the chips are down, everything you know how to exercise and apply has failed. Your mental prowess, your ingenuity, all the abilities, the, the connections, the, the strategies are failed, connections are failed. Your intelligence has failed. Your know-how has failed. Science has failed. Even money has failed. At such point, we need divine intervention. I have a strong impression in my spirit tonight, it may not be everybody, but there are few families here who need divine intervention. The God of heaven will reach out to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone said divine intervention. Divine intervention. Now, in Mark's gospel chapter 5, very um, popular passage of the Bible, the storyline of the woman with the issue of blood. We all know the storyline. But let's look at it again tonight. A few stories in the Bible and then we'll see how the Lord leads us. In Mark's gospel chapter number 5, the Bible talks about the woman with the issue of blood. Till today, we don't know her name. But she's defined by her problem. We don't know her name. Anybody knows her name? Nobody knows her name, but she's referred to as what? The woman with the issue of blood. I pray your problem will not, will not define you. I am praying for you that your problem will not become your identity. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Imagine. Her name is not mentioned. But one thing is sure. We know her problem. And then she's defined. Or identified. As the woman. With the issue of blood. In Mark chapter 5. And verse 25. A certain woman which had an issue of blood. 12 years. Huh. And let's take it from verse 24, actually. So Jesus went with him, and great multitude followed him and thronged him. A man had come to ask Jesus for help, and Jesus was on his way to his house. The man had begged, knelt at his feet, and said, my daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her. And she, that she may be healed. And she will leave. So Jesus went with him. And while he was going with him, a great multitude followed him. And thronged him. Everybody had his own issue. Everybody had their own problems. But their problems vary in, in terms of uh, uh, intensity, gravity. Their problems vary in terms of um, uh, uh, which one is more urgent to be attended to. Their problems vary in terms of uh, the fatality those problems could cause. Whether it's malignant or benign. So the ones following him their problems or their issues or their challenges were not that much. But there was a man who came and begged and said, my daughter is at the point of death. And Jesus dropped everything and straight was following him to go to his house. In the process, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. I think that's what doctors call hemorrhage. Is that right? That's hemorrhage. 12 years, the blood was flowing. Wasting. The blood did not cease. 
12 years is not 12 weeks. 12 years is not 12 months. So the blood continued to flow and as a result she continued to emanate and her life was at risk. And the Bible says in verse 26, and she had suffered many things from many physicians. I'm going to break it down. And had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. So I'll break it down. She had suffered many things of many physicians. Now when I read this passage of the Bible and I see she has suffered many things of many physicians, what comes to your mind initially is she had spent so much, you know, gathering money for surgery, for, for treatment, for medications and all that. But then you look at it in another dimension. Suffered many things of many physicians. These are my thoughts. Physician number one said to her, Madam, what we need to do to you now is to do blood transfusion. As a result, we're going to open up parts of your body. We're going to connect some pipes into you. We're going to do some blood transfusion. We're going to drain some blood. We're going to put in fresh blood. And they did all the gadgets, connected, drilled her body put pipes, put all the stuff. And then she spent one month, two months in the hospital with medications to go. At the end of two months, she was told to go home and heal up. All the places where needles had been punched, all the places where they opened up with pipes and all that, took a few weeks to heal up. And in the pain and the sufferings, she was hoping that by third month or fourth month, she will become better. But rather, the blood flow continued now heavily. Then somebody came to her and said, Ah, where, where did you go for medical treatment? And she said, Well, I went to Bethany Specialist Hospital with one of the best medical directors who worked on my case. And her friend said, Ah, Bethany Medical Hospital, forget it. Come to Ashkelon Specialist Hospital. They have the best doctors in the whole world and they will prefer solution to what you are going through. I said, are you serious? Are you sure? And the friend said, yes. And they gave her reference. References of those who have been there who had had their cases resolved. So she went to Ashkelon Medical Center with the best doctors and then they said to her, what, is, what you are going through is simple um, uh, uh, surgery. We'll fix it. And um, we will do a scan. So she paid for scan. And then she was checked into the hospital. She had to pay deposit for one month. Because they said to her, you will only be minimum of one month before you can get out of here. She said, I don't mind as long as my health can be restored. I am praying that you will not see health challenges. May you not know health challenges in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You see, when people go through health challenges and their life is at risk and their life is in danger, they are willing to spend anything and everything. Is that correct? They are ready to spend everything. They are ready to sell the best of whatever they have. As long as they can regain their health. They don't care about the wealth. The health is more important. So she mustered all her savings and then went to Ashkelon uh, Medical Center with the best doctors and then they did their own stuff. They did some surgeries, opened her up, did all the anesthetic things, caught her, uh, sewed her back and did all the stuff and then she was in the hospital for another one month trying to get better. While in the hospital, the bleeding escalated. Then the medical director of Ashkelon Medical Center referred her to another hospital and they said to her, you have to travel out of Israel for an urgent medical attention. We don't have all the equipment here, but you will get them in Antioch, neighboring town in Syria. So she traveled to Antioch and when she got to Antioch, it was the best 
uh, 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 general hospital in Antioch with the best of doctors and she moved from place to place not just spending money but going through pains the pains of needles in her body the pains of cutting her open the pains of sewing back the pains of 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 bleedings the pain of you know you name it medical medications that have side effects she was on all kinds of medication with terrible side effects some of them will cause hallucinations some of them will begin to cause palpitation some of them will begin to cause panic attack depression anxiety disorder and she was combining medication upon medication upon medication and then she came back from antioch in syria came back to israel and the thing grew worse so the bleeding increased now imagine 12 years ever say 12 12 years not 12 weeks not 12 months 12 years in this condition and somebody else came and said oh in this middle east nobody can get tough we have specialists who specialize in this kind of situation they are actually in europe so they flew out to germany and she got to germany the same story and she was hoping to get better in fact when she got to germany they opened her up again and he said again they said well we have to open you up they opened her up again they told her to do scan they told her she was going to put pay some depots she said again they said yes again but here we're different and everywhere she went they were always saying they were different and she was hoping to get solution but her life was being cut was being cut off gradually blood was ever flowing at this point she began to ooze out with very very nasty repulsive odious smell that people couldn't get close to her she was the odor coming out of her body was so repulsive was so unfriendly and that was another psychological um psychological mental torture that she has to stay a distance away from friends and relatives she has to isolate herself most of the time because of the odor coming out of her body now not only did she spend on physicians the bible says that she had spent all that she had do you know what she also spent on fragrances oil perfume oil she literally bathed herself with oil to be able to to attempt to neutralize the bad odor coming from her the bad odor emanating from her body she'll put on the best of fragrance to kill it to neutralize that odor so she was spending on the best perfumes you think mary's mary of bethany she had an alabaster box of fragrant oil you remember mary of bethany she had alabaster oil a uh, box of fragrant oil and the bible says she, she took her a whole year's savings to buy that fragrant oil that was the oil she poured on the feet of jesus and wiped the feet with her hair and jesus said she's done this for my burial and the bible says it was expensive spatnide oil very costly according to scripture so this woman i have a very strong impression she must have bought several of this kind of spagnard oil very expensive to kill the odor coming out of her body so she had mental torture emotional torture, psychological torture she had physical pains and she had financial crisis and that's why i'm trying to break this down that's why the bible says he and had suffered many things of many physicians spent all that she had and was not better now if she spent all that she had and became better that would be a success true or false 
Are you still here? That will be success. If she spent all that she had and gains back her health, uh, that will be worth thanking God for. That will be worth celebrating. If she spent, and uh, now imagine a woman who's gone through all this and she's telling you that, listen, I'm ready to spend everything. Let me just get back my health. I'm still young. The future is still bright. We're not talking about a 50-year-old woman, 60 years old. I'm not sure we're talking about a 40-year-old woman. This must have been a, a young woman. At some point, Jesus said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. She was a young woman. She had hopes. She had a future. She had dreams. So she doesn't care. Let the money go. But let my health return. I pray for someone hearing the sound of my voice. Either here or through live streaming. I pray for you my dear friend. In the name of Jesus. May you not exchange your wealth for health. Your amen is not vibrant. I pray you will not exchange your health for wealth. And may you not exchange your wealth for health and your health for wealth. A substitution theory. The devil wants to take her wealth and take her health. And there are some who buy their health with wealth and there are some who buy their health with wealth some buy wealth with their health and some buy wealth with their health and some buy the other way around health with wealth wealth with health it will never be your portion. Yeah. The blessings of good health cannot be quantified. She has suffered many things of many physicians and grew worse. Excuse me. If she spent all this amount and spent emotional Emotionally, spent psychologically, spent mentally, spent physically, spent financially. And a health situation remains. That would have still been okay. But the Bible is saying here, she grew worse. So the more she spent, the worse she became. Verse 27. When she had heard of Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. The sweetest name on Sarah's song. Sweetest name on mortal tongue sweetest car roll air Jesus blessed Jesus when she had heard of Jesus she heard of Jesus the ultimate solution to every challenge I can tell you that experientially. I can tell you that from my own personal testimonies and experience. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind. 
touched his garments. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Now let me ask you, did Jesus know her problem? Talk to me. Did, did Jesus know her problem? Uh, did, did Jesus know her problem? Wait a moment. Let me, let me be clear about the, your response. Did Jesus know her problem? Some people said no. Uh -uh. So Jesus didn't know about her problem. The Bible, the Bible even says he knew those who would betray him. The Bible says he did not commit himself to man for he knew all men. Did Jesus know her problem? Yes, he does. Did Jesus know she'll be coming? Yes, he does. Don't be carried away by those questions God asks. Adam, where are thou? Did God know where he was? Yes, he does. Don't be carried away when he says, where do we get bread to feed this multitude? For he himself knew what he will do. Jesus knew, she, Jesus knew her challenge. Jesus knew her sickness. Jesus knew the challenge, the pain she was going through. And Jesus had a plan for her. Jesus made power. Someone say power. Jesus made power available to her. For her. Jesus knew she was coming to touch the hem of his garment. He knew. Our Lord Jesus knew. He reserved power for her on that garment. You know many were touching him. You, you remember. Many were thrown. Even Peter said how can you say who touched you when many were thronging you, pressing on you? How will you say such a thing? Then Jesus says, someone touched me. Did he know who touched her? Uh, did he know who touched him? Did Jesus know who touched him? He did. Don't be carried away by those questions. Who touched me? And Jesus said, who touched me? One of you touched me. He knew. The all-knowing God, he knew. He said to Nathaniel, he said, Nathaniel, an Israelite indeed, in whom, is no, in, in whom is no guile, in whom is no blemish. Nathaniel said, how did you know me? That's in John 1 and verse 46 and 47. So he said to Nathaniel, did I not see you under the tree? When they came to call you, I saw you. I saw you. Can we have the New King James Version of, of the Bible? So Nathaniel said unto him, Nathaniel said unto him, how do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, before Philip called you when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Huh? Nathaniel said, oh my goodness, verse 49. He said, Nathaniel said, said, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. This blows my mind. Then Jesus replies in verse 50. Hear what Jesus said. Jesus answered and said to him, because I said to you that I saw you under the fig tree. This, this tiny, uh, small revelation, you know, you believe? <laughs> he said, you, you haven't seen anything yet. You will see greater things than these. And can I prophesy to every family under the sound of my voice, before the end of this year, you will see greater things that God will do for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will see greater things than this. Thus saith the Lord, you will see greater things than this. You, you think what you're experiencing now is a miracle. You are going to see greater things than this. You think what you are experiencing now is a big testimony. Thus saith the Lord, you will see greater things than this. Say, I believe it. Say, I receive it. Say, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Now declare what God has already said. Say, I will see greater things. I will experience greater miracles. 
than this in Jesus name and everybody shout amen, amen. he said to Nathaniel you will see greater things than these you, you just saw uh, a tip of the iceberg and you're already saying excited Jesus said calm down you're going to see greater things than this and I'm saying to some of you under the sound of my voice you will experience greater miracles than you have seen greater things than this someone say greater things you see greater things than this so Jesus knows everybody Jesus knew that woman was coming so Jesus made provision for her healing so the power was residual the power was resident the power was hanging on the garment the power was there it was actually reserved for her Jesus knew she would be coming Jesus knew she would be coming Jesus knew he himself knew what he would do hallelujah verse number 29 let's see verse 29 and straight away the fountain of her blood was dried up someone say praise the lord now i want to praise god as though you are just knowing this just happens say praise the lord now the reason why you are not that excited is because you've read it over and over again i want to imagine that is a real real time online event that a woman has suffered many things from many physicians a woman has gone through this kind of torture mental emotional psychological torture and jesus knowing her situation reserved power in his garment for this woman and she came in the press behind. I am praying for you. The grace to push. The grace to follow on. The grace to follow up. With what God has provided and reserved for you. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give it up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. There's a miracle waiting for you. There's a blessing waiting for you. There's a miracle with your name written on it. There's a blessing with your name written on it. Don't throw in the towel. Press. Someone say press. Tonight when we begin to pray, press in the place of prayer. Lay hold on it. Press and push in the place of prayer. She said to herself, If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be made whole. And she did, verse 29, she did, she touched. And when she touched the hem of the garment, immediately, immediately, someone say immediately. That's divine intervention. Immediately. Immediately, the fountain of her blood flow, dried up. And she felt it in her body that she was healed of the affliction there's going to be healing here tonight. Your amen is not vibrant. There's going to be healing here tonight. God has helped us in many of our meetings around the world. We experience, we see testimonies. Lots of testimonies. This year we have seen thousands of people healed in different meetings put together. This year we've recorded thousands of testimonies of healings to the glory of God. So we're not talking about fables. We're not talking about things that are unreal. The power of God is so real. There are too many testimonies that time will fail. We've seen lumps. We've seen cancerous growth disappear, dry up. To the glory of God. We've seen the deaf ears open up. To the glory of God. We've seen God straightened bones, bent bones straightened up. 
to the glory of God. We've seen hands grow out. We've seen leg grow out and become equal to the other one, to the glory of God. We've seen God touch people's eyes and, and open up the eyes to the glory of God. So these are not fables. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. When are you expecting God to work miracles in your life? When? Now. So you are going to join those who will say immediately. Someone say immediately. When? How, how do you want that response? Immediately. Someone say immediately. There's progressive miracles and there is instant miracle. Which one do you prefer tonight? Instant miracles. She was healed of the affliction. And then what follows? The Bible says in verse number 30, and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him. The one for whom I reserved the power has come to collect it. Has come to pick it up. Tonight you will pick it up. See how, see your response. I said tonight you will pick it up. There's a blessing reserved for you. You will pick it up. You will receive it. You will collect it. The Bible says, Jesus immediately knowing in himself, the power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? Now let me ask you, did you know who touched his clothes? Oh, did somebody still say no? Did he know who touched his clothes? He knew. We're talking about the all-knowing God, the almighty, the all-powerful. Look at Psalm 139. Look at Psalm 139. See what it says in Psalm 139. You compass my, my going and my coming, my rising. He said, oh Lord, you have searched me and what? Known me. You know my what? Sitting down and my rising up. Chai, you understand my thought from afar. You comprehend my path and my lying down. And you are acquainted with all my ways. Come on. Have you, do you have the New Living Translation of this Bible passage or have you got the um, uh, uh, or the um, message translation? Okay. All right. Listen to this now. He says, Oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I am far away. <laughs> you see me when I travel. When I rest at home, you know everything I do. <laughs> you know what I am going to say. <laughs> Even before I say it. That, that is to say, that is to say, that is to say, say something, sir. Say something. He knew you were going to say that. So, even when you are trying to change what you want to say. He knew you were going to change what you want to say. You know what I'm, what I'm going to say even before I say it. So let me tell you this. God knows everything I'll be saying here in this meeting tonight. He does. You know what I'm going to say, even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. That's the part I like. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. You go before me and follow me. You even place your hand of blessing on my head. Let this be your portion in the name of Jesus. May God go before you. May God follow you. May God place his hand of blessing upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say amen three times. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. You go before me. You follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Verse number 6. It says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Too great for me to understand. So here is a point we are making. I am saying to you that Jehovah knew the woman was coming to touch her. To touch him. The almighty God knew the woman was coming to touch him. When he said, who, who touched my clothes? He knew who touched his clothes. But his usual way of operation. He would say, don't tell anybody I, I healed you. Don't tell anybody. Hide it. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Are you ready for divine intervention here tonight? God is about to place his hand on someone. There's a family here that will enjoy the, the hand of the Lord. It will bring you out of obscurity to limelight. The hand of the Lord will bring you out of the merry clay. It will bring you out of the horrible pit and set you upon a rock and establish your goings and put a new song in your mouth in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God is about to give joy to a family under the sound of my voice. There's someone here in the sound of my voice. God is about to compensate said to you for the disappointment of the yesteryears you've had disappointments in the last few months and last few weeks compensation is coming for you in the mighty name of jesus christ there's someone here in the sound of my voice divine intervention is coming for your family Oh, shakata bokori makata. You didn't hear what I said. I said divine intervention is coming for your family. Somebody shout divine intervention. I see it happening. Divine intervention is coming for your family. Divine intervention. Hey, divine intervention. Before it causes you shame, God will intervene. Before it brings you down, God will intervene. Before it kills you, God will intervene. Before it damages the organs of your body, God will intervene. Before you are disgraced and evicted, God will intervene. He will not, he will not allow your Holy One to see corruption. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 16 and verse number 8, 9 and 10, I have set the Lord always before me because it's at my right hand I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. Thou and my flesh, thou shalt not leave my soul in hell nor allow your Holy One to see corruption. Thou shalt show me the path of life when thy presence fullness of joy on your right hand are pleasures forevermore. He will let you see corruption. He will let you see disgrace. In Joel chapter 2 and verse 25, 26 and 27, he said concerning my people, he says, so I will restore the years and the locusts and the, cat and the caterpillar and the cucumbers eating. I will restore. I will restore. Then verse 26, verse 26 declares, he says, and you shall eat in plenty. Say that's for me. <laughs> Say that's for me. You shall eat in plenty and be what satisfied. Say that's for me. Now you shall praise the name of the Lord, your God, that has dealt wondrously. How will God deal with you? Wondrously. The word wondrously means it will make you see wonders. Say it will make me see wonders. He's dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never. Be ashamed. Say, that's for me. Come and say, that's for my family. My people shall never. Come and say, never. Say, I will never be ashamed. That's the word of the Lord. My people shall never be ashamed. Now, if you go to verse 27, God repeats it again. I shall know that I am the Lord in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God, none else. Then he repeats double emphasis. My people shall shall say that never loud and clear. Shall say never, 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 never. 
Say, I shall never be ashamed. You have a deadline. You have an ultimatum. Thus, the Lord has sent me to you tonight. They are about to put you to shame. Divine intervention is coming. Your amen is not vibrant. They are about to mess you up. Divine intervention is coming. I have a word for you. My people shall never be ashamed. Say, that's my word. <laughs> that's my word. Before they mess you up, God will lift you up. Did you hear what I said? Stand on your feet. Let's pray for one minute. Say, in the name of Jesus, my God will lift me up. Say, in the name of Jesus, my God will fight for me. Say, I shall not be put to shame. My God will not keep silence. He will fight for me. Come and open your mouth and declare. In the name of Jesus. I will not be put to shame. My God will fight for me. Come on say my God will fight for me. I will not be put to shame. Boy Gashita will not be put to shame. My God will fight for me. My God will fight for me. Boy God will not be put to shame. My God will fight for me. In the name of Jesus. You my friend shall not be put to shame. You my brother shall not be put to shame. You my sister shall not be put to shame. He said my people shall never be ashamed. They will never be ashamed. My God will fight for me. My God will fight for me. In the name of Jesus. Somebody pray. My God will fight for me. Somebody pray. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. We're going to take another prayer. Say, I will not be ashamed. Uh, you won't be ashamed. You will never be ashamed. God will fight for you. They want to mess you up. Before they mess you up, God will lift you up. The enemy wants to silence you. Before they do that, God will neutralize them. He will not suffer your foot to be moved. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night. He will preserve your soul. The Lord will bless your going and your coming from this day henceforth. In Psalm chapter 50 verse number 3, he says, Our God shall come. Say, my God will come. Say it again. Say, my God will come. Psalm 15 verse 3. He says, Our God shall come and shall not keep what? Silent. A fire shall devour before him and it shall be very tempestuous all round him. Declare loud and clear. Say, My God will come. Say, My God shall come. He won't keep silent. You know what I'm hearing for a family here? God is coming for you. It won't keep silent. Enough is enough. Say, my God shall come. He will not keep silent. Now, I want to declare loud and clear. Open your mouth. Say, my God shall come. He will not keep silent. My God shall come. He will not keep silent. Fire will be before him. He shall be very tempestuous round about him. My God shall come. My God Jesus' name Jesus. we have prayed. Amen. Say amen three powerful times. Amen. Amen. amen.
Amen. Wow. Now listen to this. Jesus turns back. He said, who touched me? And Peter and the rest of the apostles began to look around and say, Sir, you see the multitude thronging me, you. And you say, who touched me? Short of saying to him, are you all right? He said, this whole multitude. Jesus said, someone touched me. I felt power leave my body. Someone touched me. Power just left. Ah. Power just left. Tonight, power will flow in your direction. Your amen is not vibrant. I say power will flow in your direction. In the name of Jesus. Come on, say power. Flow in my direction. In the name of Jesus. Say power of God. Flow in my direction. In the name of Jesus. One more time. Say power of God. Flow in my direction. In the name of Jesus. Say I reach out to him. Say I connect. With God's power. For miracles. For signs and wonders. For healing. For deliverance. For restoration. Say I connect. With God's power. Even right now. In the name of Jesus, open your mouths and pray. Mashike telebre de po shike telebre da lobo shanda reba ko palike telebre de shike telebre kato lobo reba shoko pare na lebo shike telebra reba shoko tolebre kato lobo shike tele lebra ko masaka talabo shike telebra kato masike telebre kato lebre kaza kato lobo reba shoto leba shike talabra bede beda reba shike telebra basa kato Reba shakata lava raba kata lava raba kata lava raba leko shakata lava shakata lava rakata lava masuko para kata lava shakete rekato lava shakete lebra kata lava masuko ba shakete lebra kata lava masike lebo shakete le kaza masike disebe da no sana da reba ko ba ni kata lava raba shakete lebra raba masike lebra kato raba shakete lebra kaba masike lebra da reka shwe Jesus name we have prayed amen say i connect i connect with god's power with god's power for signs and wonders for, signs and wonders. for healings for, healing. for miracles for, miracles. for deliverances for i connect i connect with god's power Power. For signs and wonders. For signs and wonders. I connect. I connect with God's power. With God's power. For miracles. For miracles. For healing. For healing. For signs and wonders. For signs and for wonders. For divine intervention. For divine intervention. In the name of Jesus. In the name, In the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Say amen three times. Amen. 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 Jesus. Who touched me? Someone touched me. Power flow. Power moved in a direction. Not in every direction, but in a direction. Is she okay? Huh? Power is flowing through that direction. Power flow in my direction. <laughs> Lift your hands. Say power, power. Flow, flow in my direction. Say Jesus power. Jesus power. Flow, flow in my direction. In my direction. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. uh -huh. Yes. Flow in the direction of your children. Power. Flow, flow in the direction of your children. Yes. Healings, yes. deliverance, yes. miracles, yes. signs and wonders. Yes. Now, 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 
now, now, now, now. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Let the power flow, 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 flow in your direction. Long term problems dry up. Amen. Long term issues go. Amen. Go. Amen. Power. Yes. Flow. Yes. In their direction. Amen. Say one more time. Say power. Power. Flow. Flow. In my direction. In my direction. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ah, that's right. Who touched me? Jesus said. Verse 32. And he looked around to see. Ha. Who are done? Someone said done. You have to do something. Who had done this thing? What did she do? She grabbed. She connected. Say, I connect. You have to do something. See, he said, he turned to see she who had done this thing. Done this thing. What did she do? She connected. He turned around to see she who had done this thing. Who had done. The woman did this thing. The woman did something. What did she do? She grabbed the garment. She connected. Tonight, God's power will flow. Amen. In your direction. Amen. Ah, it's flowing in your direction. Amen. Now, now, nobody in this meeting will live the same. Amen. Amen. There's, there's high... High tension Holy Ghost power. Yes, amen. amen. High tension Holy Ghost power. Amen. amen. In this place tonight. In this place this morning. Yes. And verse 33. Scripture declares. But the woman. Fearing. And trembling. Fearing. And trembling. Can I pray for you? The miracle that will make you tremble is a big deal. Now, that fear is not the negative fear. It's awe. Awe. When you say someone standing in awe. She fearing and trembling. Say, ha. Ah. Ah. Ha. Ah. Breathtaking. <laughs> when God does something for you and your family that is classified as breathtaking awesome breathtaking amazing fearing and trembling I've seen this many times we are doing a meeting in it was a regional women's conference July end of July I was with Pastor Brown Oyitsa um, uh, Mommy Oyitso put together a regional women's conference sometimes in July. I was in that meeting. I was given a platform to speak to minister. And as I began to minister, God's presence was very strong before I started preaching the word. The power of God fell. And the word of knowledge came for women, some women who had lumps in their bodies. And we had a few of them, number of them who were healed instantly. But the one that amazed me was a sister. It's, still, it's on YouTube. Was a sister who was trembling. This word describes she was on the altar giving her testimony and said the growth, the lump has disappeared. I can't find it and she was in tears and she was trembling I still watched it, was it two months ago I still went back to the video to watch it so I can find it she said I did a surgery on the right breast because of the cancerous growth and 
they had to do surgery on it and the thing was now growing on the left breast but in that meeting the fire of God came down and we had close to 12 women who were testifying of growth that disappeared but hers was spectacular to me and she was crying and, and shaking and trembling and said I, I can't find it in tears she, she was searching she said I can't find the lump it's all gone the power of God hit her she fell under the anointing right there this was the last Saturday of July just three months ago I've seen many of this by the grace of God fearing and trembling Ha! Oh. Psalm 126 when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion we were like them that dreamed like a dream fearing and trembling incredible testimonies I prophesy and I declare over every family under the sound of my voice may God give you breathtaking testimony Amen. Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. Amen. may God give you amazing testimony Amen. Amen. may God give you wonderful testimony Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. testimonies that, can, that cannot be phantomed Amen. testimonies that are inexplicable Amen. Amen. may God give you Testimonies that are inexplicable. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen to this. Fearing and trembling. Ongbo. I've seen this many times. And I'm telling you the truth. Fearing and trembling. I was speaking somewhere in Australia a few years ago in Sydney, Australia where we saw a woman who had one leg shorter than the other. Right in that meeting the leg grew out and became equal. And she was trembling. Fearing and trembling. She was trembling. The legs became equal and began to walk by the power of God. We had a meeting with Israel Assembly of the RCCG. Israel Assembly, when it, when it was quite young, a parish, somewhere close to a Lausa area. A Mawa Gardens area. They used to meet in Mawa Gardens then. I remember the story of a woman, the testament of a woman. Pastor Bayo was the parish pastor then, Bayo Samangbe. So you can check out those testimonies. And the woman had had an accident and she was, she went through surgery, the first surgery. She was built for another surgery, whether it was in Germany or in the UK. I can't remember, but it was going to be in Europe. And so one hand was shorter than the other by several inches. And she had just put to bed so she couldn't even carry her own baby with her hands. Her mother had to stay with her and she was in excruciating pain. And that meeting that night, it was a night vigil. I'll never forget. A night to be remembered. Now was it a night vigil? No, I'm sorry. It was the other testament, same parish, but another testament was night vigil. But this particular testament was a Sunday morning. So I, we prayed for those who were sick and people came for testimony. And she was one of those who came for testimony and said she came to testify. She said, look at this, my hand, shorter than the other. But this hand has been in pains. I had an accident. I've gone through surgeries. I've been in pain. But now no more pain. All the bones are healed. No more pain. 
but the hand was still shorter than the other one. But the pain had left. So, while she was sharing the testimony, I just felt in my spirit, if God can heal the pain and take away the pain, then God can also make the hand grow out and become equal to the other hand. So, God, you, you don't do half things. So, I said, do you believe the Lord who healed you can cause your hand to grow and become equal to the other one? She said, I believe. Ah. So I, I asked the audience, do you believe God can do it? They said, yes. So, so everybody stretch your hands. Let's pray for her. And as we started praying, the power of God hit her. She fell under the anointing and was, was trembling under the power. She was shaking under the power. So she didn't get up. And for me, I was a bit okay with that. Because um, let her be under the power. Because I didn't want to. I didn't want to um, ask her to check. Because everybody was watching. Sometimes you, you think all of us have this immaculate faith. The man said to Jesus, I believe, help my unbelief. That's the story of some of us. Well, maybe some. You, other ministers are super, you are super faith people. But I, I also entertain my worries and my fears. So when she was under the power, I said, that's a good way to close the meeting. Let her enjoy the power. So we left her, the service closed. I went to the pastor's room. Uh, office and while I was refreshing the pastor's office, not up to five or ten minutes after we shared the grace and all that, this woman came into the pastor's office trembling, fearing and trembling and sweating. I said, Pastor, see, Pastor, see, the hand, the shorter hand had grown out, became equal to the normal hand. In our very eyes, I saw it. Pastor Bayo saw it. Pastor Bayo went on his knees and began to worship the Lord. We couldn't hold back tears. The woman was weeping profusely. She said, I used to call this magic. I never believed this happens in real life. She was trembling and sweating and said, I will. I think that year she said she was going to buy a generator for the church. This was many years back. The woman fearing and trembling knowing what had happened to her came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. You're telling him the truth. He already knows the truth. He's only asking, will you be made whole? Will thou be made whole? Huh. He knows. He knows. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Be healed of your what? It was an affliction. Tonight I declare be healed of every affliction. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Declare Lord that I say no more affliction. No more affliction in my life. In my life. Say no more affliction. No more affliction. In my body. In my body. Say I am healed. I am healed. Say I have delivered. I am delivered. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am blessed. I am blessed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say no more affliction. No more affliction. From this moment. From this moment. I go in peace. I go in peace. I am totally healed. I am totally restored. Restore. Deliver. Deliver. 
Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. As she left that place, she suffered many things. Of how many physicians? Talk to me. Of how many physicians? And I've, I've analyzed to you. She suffered many things. Pains, physical, emotional, psychological, mental, financial. Many physicians. Then divine intervention came for her. You are next. She was carrying emblem of shame all over the place. Her body odor was repulsive. Emblem of shame all over the place. Then there was divine intervention. You are next. Amen. Say, I am next. I am, I am next, next. For divine intervention. For, for divine, divine intervention. intervention. Jesus. In, In the, the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. Finally. We'll begin to pray shortly. finally. Oh my goodness, I feel the anointing of God. Are you ready? Are you ready for that touch? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Divine intervention. In Isaiah chapter 37, there was a terrible guy, terrible king. His name is Sennacherib. He threatened the God's people. And he said to them, I'm coming to destroy you. I'm coming to overwhelm you. I'm coming to take over your land. I'm coming to take over your everything you have. I'm coming to take over everything you have. Get ready, I'm coming. Don't think you have a God that can save you. Forget it. And he told the people of Judah and Jerusalem, he said, don't, don't, don't put your faith in Ezekiah, you know, stupid Ezekiah, calling on one God that is not real. Go and ask other people of other nations what I did to, their, to them and their gods. What? He started comparing Jehovah with Beelzebub. He started comparing Jehovah with Molech. So I compared Jehovah with the demon gods of the Sidonians, the god of the Assyrians, the god of the Egyptians. You're comparing Jehovah God. You know, that is synonymous to 
those giving you negative testimony. I said, don't waste your time. That's how this person died. That's what killed this person. That's what killed that person. God can't heal you all. Are there sicknesses and diseases that are boasting and saying, don't let any God deceive you. We have killed many people. You know, sicknesses have mouth, they speak. They are spirits. In Isaiah chapter number 36, and verse 1, I'm rounding up now. Are you still here? Say amen. Say amen again. One more amen. Anybody getting blessed? Yes. Give me the New Living Translation. Sweetest carol ever sung. Jesus. Blessed Jesus. In the 14th year of King Ezekiah's reign, King Sennacherib of Assyria came to attack the fortified towns of Judah and conquered them. Then the king of Assyria sent his chief of staff from Lachish with a huge army to confront king of King Hezekiah in Jerusalem. The Assyrians took up a position beside the aqueduct that feeds water into the upper pool near the road leading to the field where cloth is washed. These are the officials who went out to meet with them. Eliakim, son of Ilkiah, the palace administrator, Shipna, the court secretary, and Joah, son of Asaph, the royal historian. Verse 4, then the Assyrians, Assyrian king's chief of staff told them to give the message to Hezekiah. This is what the king, the great king of Assyria says. Great king, great king. Only God is a great king. What are you trusting in that makes you so confident? Do you think that mere words can substitute for military skill and strength? Chai, who are you counting on that you have rebelled against me? Hey! On Egypt? If you lean on Egypt, it will be like a reed that splinters beneath your weight. And pierces your hand. Pharaoh the king of Egypt is completely unreliable. Because I the king of Assyria. I Sennacherib have dealt with him already. But perhaps you will say to me. We are trusting in the Lord our God. <laughs> but isn't he the one. Who, who was insulted by Hezekiah? Didn't Hezekiah tear down his shrines and altars. And make everyone in Judah and Jerusalem worship only at the altar here in Jerusalem. <laughs> I tell you what, strike a bargain with my master, the king of Assyria, and I'll give you 200 horses, 2,000 horses, if you can find that many men to ride on them. With your tiny army. How can you think of challenging even the weakest contingent of my master's troops? See boasting, see arrogance. Even with the help of Egypt's chariots and charioteers. <laughs> What's more? Do you think we have invaded land, your land, without the Lord's direction? The Lord himself told us, attack this land and destroy it. What? Then Eliakim Shebna Joah said to the Assyrian chief of staff, please speak to us in Aramaic for we understand it well. Don't speak in Hebrew for the people on the wall will hear. They didn't want to be disgraced. Hmm. Verse 12. But Sennacherib's chief of staff replied, Do you think my master sent this message only to you and your master? He wants all the people to hear it. For when we put this city under siege, they will suffer along with you. They will be so hungry and thirsty. And they will eat their own dung and drink. <laughs> their own urine. Then the chief of staff stood and shouted in Hebrew to the people of the world, listen to this message from the great king of Assyria. Huh. 
This is what the king says. Don't let Ezekiah deceive you. He will never be able to rescue you. Don't let him fool you into trusting in the Lord. By saying the Lord will surely rescue us. This city will never fall into the hands of, of the Assyrian king. Huh. Verse 16. Don't listen to Ezekiah. These are the times the king of Assyria is offering. Make peace with me. Open the gates and come out. Then each of you can continue eating from your own grapevine and fig tree and drinking your own well. Verse 17. Then I will arrange to take you to another land like this one. A land of grain, new wine, and bread. and fine. Now you see how a human being is talking like God. Don't let Ezekiah mislead you by saying, the Lord will rescue us. Have the gods of any other nations ever saved their people from the king of Assyria? Ah, you missed it. Sennacherib, you just made a grave mistake. By comparing Jehovah God to the gods of Hamath, the gods of Harpad, the gods of Sepaphrim. Did any God rescue Samaria from my power? What God of any nation has ever been able to save its people from my power. So what makes you think that the Lord can rescue Jerusalem from me? But the people were silent and did not utter a word because Ezekiah had commanded them. Don't answer him. Oh, he's a madman. Then Eliakim of Hilkiah, the palace administrator, Shepna the court secretary, and Joah, son of Asaph, the royal historian, went back to Ezekiah. They tore their clothes in despair. And they went in to see the king and told him what the Assyrian head chief had said. When the king Ezekiah had their report, he tore his clothes, put on ball up, went to where? Talk to me. Where did he go? Temple of the Lord. They that seek him will never be put to shame. We're going to pray. <laughs> Who is boasting against you? Sickness, disease, barrenness, your health condition. Who is boasting against your God? Who is saying to you, other gods have not been able to deliver their own persons? Is it Jehovah that will deliver you? Then they prayed. Then they came to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. Tonight I come as God's prophet, as a solution provider. They told him, this is what the king Ezekiah says, today is a day of trouble. Insults and what? Disgrace. It is like when a child is ready to be born, but the mother has no strength to push the baby. Perhaps the Lord, your God, has had the Assyrian chief of staff sent by king to defy the living God and will punish him for his words. Oh, pray for those of us who are left. Let me fast forward. After King Ezekiah's official delivered the king's message to Isaiah, the prophet replied, say to your master, this is what the Lord says, do not be disturbed. Ma, do not be disturbed. Amen. I'm speaking to you. It's a word for you. Yes. I don't know how it applies to you. But it says, do not be disturbed. Amen. 
Such a set you do not be disturbed. There are six of you here. The Lord is leading me to say to you, don't be disturbed. Amen. Amen. Six of you. Only imagine your worry. Do not be disturbed. He said, I should say to you, sir, do not be disturbed. Amen. Don't be disturbed by his blasphemous speech against me from Assyrian king's messengers. Listen, I myself will move against him, hey, says the man. man. And the king will receive a message that is needed at home. <laughs> One translation says he will hear a rumor. Yes. He will return to his land where I will I will where I will have him killed. I will have, have him killed. With what? A sword. Amen. The name of Jesus. He will be killed. Because there will be divine intervention. Stand. Let us pray. So what happens? In verse number 21. Verse 21. Then Isaiah, son of Amos. Let's read together. Everybody participate. One, two, let's go. Then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent this message to Ezekiah. This is what the Lord God of Israel says. Because you prayed about King Sennacherib of Assyria. Wait a moment. Because you prayed. You see what we miss when we don't pray? Pray. Pray. Because you prayed. If you didn't pray, the word won't come. Because you prayed. Pray, we're asking you to please pray. Because you prayed. Because you prayed to me against Sennacherib. King of Assyria, because you prayed. Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Ezekiah. I like that. Saying, thus says the Lord, God of Israel. When verse 21, media, when verse 21, not verse 22 yet. This is what the Lord God of Israel says. Because you prayed to me against Sennacherib. Before we read verse 20, lift your hands up to heaven. Say in the name of Jesus. Whoever represents Sennacherib. Whatever represents Sennacherib. Whatever represents Sennacherib. Whatever represents Sennacherib. Whoever represents Sennacherib. Whoever represents Sennacherib. Whatever represents Sennacherib. Whatever represents In my life. In my life. In my family. In my family. Posting against me. Posting against Posting against my God. Posting against my God. Oh my Father. Oh my Father. Neutralize them. Neutralize them. By fire. By fire. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. In the name of Open Jesus, I pray. Neutralize La comprehendo se me le Le boshaka tele begede de de begede de begede de begede de rebakoto le 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 rebakada da ba neutralize neutralize in the name of Jesus Christ masakoto kofaka tala barede de rebakoto le boshaka tele begede le rebakoto kofaka 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 le kofara kofaka kofere da kofaka le kofara le le da kofere be de katole ba le kofara le le boshaka we are praying. Amen. Amen. Say whoever. 
whatever, whatever, whatever represent, represent Senakerib, Senakerib, in my life, in my life, in my family, in my family, posting against me, posting against and me, and my God, and my God, to be neutralized, to be neutralized by fire, by fire, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let the cover red deliver, shake it, deliver, 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 I declare I whoever, whatever represents Senakarib in your life, boasting against you and your God and our God. Be neutralized by fire. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Be neutralized by fire. Amen. Amen. Verse 22. The Lord has spoken this word against him. May God speak against your adversary. The virgin daughter of Zion despises you. And laughs at you. You will laugh at your adversary. Amen. You will laugh at them. Amen. True. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh at them. That's what the Bible says. So if your father laughs at them, you should laugh at them too. Yes. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh at them. Everyone really laugh at them. The virgin daughter of Zion despises you and laughs at you. All your boasting. See, it shall be well with you. Amen. Don't be disturbed. Go about your normal business. You are victorious. Amen. You will laugh at your adversary. Amen. Those who want to laugh you to scorn and laugh you to disgrace. The tide of events will turn around against you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The daughter of Jerusalem shakes her head in derision as she flees. That's what's going to happen to Sennacherib. You are going to laugh at Sennacherib. And you will shake your head as he runs. He's going to hear a rumor. He will hear a rumor. Whom have you been defying and ridic ridic ridiculing? Against whom did you raise your voice? At whom did you look with such haughty eyes? Huh? It was the Holy One of Israel. You see how God is making a case? You see how I like this? You see how God is making a who, who, God is saying, who did you lift your voice against? Who are you looking at like that? Is it me you are saying those words at with your haughty eyes and proud look? Me. By your messengers you have defied the Lord. You have said with, with my many chariots I have conquered the highest mountains. Yes, the remotest peaks of Lebanon. I have cut down its tallest cedars and its finest cypress trees. I have reached its farthest heights and explored its deepest forest. But hear this now. I have dug wells in many foreign lands and refreshed myself with their water. With the sole of my foot, I stopped all the rivers of Egypt. <laughs> Keep boasting. But have you not heard? Says the Lord. I decided this long ago. Long ago, I planned it. Now I'm making it happen. I planned for you to crush fortified cities into heaps of rubble. That is why their people have so little power and so frightened and confused. They are as weak as grass, as easily trampled as tender green shoots. They are like grass sprouting on housetops, cut before it can grow lush and stall. But I know you well. Where you stay, where you come and go. I know the way you have raged against me. What a mighty God. And because of your raging against me and your arrogance, 
which I have heard for myself. I will put my hook in your nose, my bit in your mouth. I will make you return by the same road on which you came. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Here's the proof that what I say is true. This year you will eat only what grows up by itself. Next year you will eat what springs up from that. But in the third year you will plant crops and harvest them. You will tend vineyards and eat their fruit. That's the sign God will give you. And you who are left in Judah, you have escaped the ravages of the siege, will put roots down in your own soil and grow up and flourish. Say amen somebody. For a remnant of my people will spread out. Verse 33. Let's go now. And this is what the Lord says about the king of Assyria. His armies will not enter Jerusalem. They will not even shoot an arrow. They will not march outside its gates. With their shields nor build banks of earth against its walls. Now, hear this. By the way he came, the king will return to his own country by the same road on which he came. He will not enter this city, says the Lord. For I will defend this city for my servant David's sake and protect it. Then verse 36, let's read together. Everybody. That night, the angel of the Lord went out to the Assyrian camp killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers and when the surviving Assyrians woke up the next morning, they found corpses everywhere. Not one arrow was shot. Bloodless battle. God killed 185,000 soldiers. Then King Sennacherib of Assyria broke camp and returned to his own land. He went home to his capital of Nineveh and stayed there. Verse 38. Read together. One, two, let's go. While he was worshipping in the temple of his god, Nisroch. Wait a moment. His god that failed him. His god that couldn't fight for him. People can be so foolish. 185,000 soldiers dead because the angel of Jehovah went and struck them overnight. And your common sense does not tell you to convert and be a follower of that God. You still went to the temple of idiot God called Nisroch to worship. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying here? I would have expected him to say, hey, the God I boasted against has sent one angel. How many angels? One. one. And killed how many soldiers? One in the five thousand soldiers. This must be the true God. I should serve this God. Very foolish. God gave them up to reprobate mind. To do things that are foolish. So he went to his own God. His sons. Adramelech and Sherazza killed him with their own swords. They then escaped to the land of Ararat and another son Esarhaddon became the next king of Assyria. This is how his life ended. That was how the Sennacherib who boosted and boosted and boosted and boosted and boosted. That was how his life ended. This was how Ezekiah who was at the point of extinction, at the point of disgrace, experienced divine intervention. intervention. You are next. Amen. You are next. Amen. You are next. Amen. You are next. Amen. Say divine intervention. Divine, divine intervention. intervention. Come for me. Come, Come for, for me. me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I receive divine intervention. I receive divine intervention. After the order of Ezekiel. Yeah, after the order of Ezekiel. Open your mouth. I receive divine intervention. Open your mouth. Pray, 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 pray. In the name of Jesus.
To my prayers before I I wrap it up. I want you to pray for you, the, your neighbor next to you. Pick someone of your choice. It doesn't have to be the person next to you. Pick someone of your choice. Pray for this fellow. That God grant my brother, my sister, urgent divine intervention. I have a very strong impression, my spirit, that there are people who need urgent divine intervention. You're going to pray. The Bible says, pray for one another that you may be healed. Say, Father, Father in the name of Jesus, in the name, name of Jesus, please grant my brother, please grant, grant my, my brother, brother, my sister, my sister, sister divine intervention, divine, divine intervention. intervention. Let there be deliverance. Let, let there be deliverance. Let there be healing. Let, let there be healing. Let there be provision. Let there be provision. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Oh my God, let there be provision. Let there be deliverance. Let there be provision. Let there be provision. Let there be deliverance. Let there be provision. Let there be provision. Let there be provision. Say, I receive. I receive divine intervention, divine, divine intervention for my family. For my family, oh God, oh God, send deliverance, send, send, deliverance. send help, send help in the name of Jesus. In the name, name of Jesus, everybody shout, Amen. 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 I declare and I decree everyone who has been under torment, attack in your dreams. Anyone under the sound of my voice whose name has been taken to evil altars. Anyone under the sound of my voice whose pictures has been taken to evil altars. Anyone under the sound of my voice whose material from their bodies have been donated on the altar of wicked sacrifice. I ask by the power that delivered Ezekiah from the hands of Sennacherib. By that same power, receive total deliverance. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. By the power that healed the woman with the issue of blood. Yes. After 20 years of torment. 12 years of torment. By that same power, receive your deliverance. Amen. Amen. 
In the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive your deliverance. Amen. In the name of Jesus.